Hello all. In the past two videos, we discussed about Silings SDK and how to use SDK for implementing your custom software, targeting the processor core inside the Zinc chip. So in this tutorial, we are going to use the PL part, the program or logic, the SPG fabric inside the Zinc chip and see how to implement your custom hardware on that FPG part. Okay, so remember this is our Z board. This is what is our target platform. And in the last two tutorial, we have used the UART interface of Z board for communicating with your PC. Okay, now every other interface on this board, whether it be HDMI, VGA, FMC card, the slide switches, push button, or LED, you cannot control any of them directly from the processor because none of them are actually interfaced with the processor. All other interfaces, they are connected with the PL part of the chip. So you cannot access them directly from the processor. The only way to access them from the processor is through the FPGA part, which we will discuss later. So today we are going to discuss how to access the slide switches and LEDs from the FPGA part. We are not going to use the processor part for this project. Now, the aim of this project is to use the LEDs to indicate the position of the slide switches. So what I need is whenever I turn on a particular slide switch, the corresponding LED should glow. When I turn off the LED, uh, sorry, the slide switch, the corresponding LED should turn off. Now, there is no connection between the LED or the slide switches on this board, but both LEDs as well as slide switches are connected to the zinc. Okay, so some of the pins of this chip, they are directly wired to these LEDs as well as to the slide switch. So what should basically happen is when I turn on the slide switch, that high voltage will come to the chip and the chip should connect that wire to the LED. That's it. So the LED will turn on. Or in, in, in a simpler way, this switch should be connected to this LED through the FPGA so that whenever I turn on the switch, the LED is closed and whenever I turn off the switch, the LED turns off. So that is our high world program for hardware. Now, in order to uh, implement anything on the FPGA fabric, the PL part, you should use the Vivado software. Okay, I have already opened it. Vivado is a very memory intensive software. So you need to have minimum 8 GB RAM in your system to use it. Okay, so I recommend you to use our lab machines. Now, once the auto comes up, you go ahead and create a project either from the quick start menu or from the file tab. And you get the create new window, new project window. You give a name to your project. So let me call it simply LED control. You specify where to save your project. So save it at a nice place so that you remember it later and please try to save each project in a separate folder so that it is easy to find them later now next you have to choose the project type we are going to do an rtl project which i discussed in last semester rtl project is basically you are going to describe your hardware in one of the hdl languages either vhdl or vidlog you are going to use the vidlog hdl language this time so choose RTL project next. Now, this is more like, again, the software development platform. So if you already have Vidlog code written for your hardware, you can simply add those files here. If you don't have any file, like we are starting now, you can just keep it as such. And here you will choose your target HDL language. So we are going to use Vidlog, uh, not VHDL this time. So click next here. You can add the constraints file 
So last semester we have seen some constraints regarding ASIC design, like our STC constraints. So this time also we will have some constraints file. I will describe them later. So at this time I don't have any constraint file. So click next. Here you have to choose your target SPGA platform. Now remember Vivado is a uh, SDK or development platform for FPGAs from Xilinx. So it will basically list all the FPGAs available. And from this list, you will have to choose the particular FPGA that you are targeting. So remember on Zboard, we have Zinc Z020 484 CLG 484 minus 1 that is the FPGA part so you either find it from this list or the easiest method is if you are using Z board is to go to boards here the other tab and choose that board now if you choose that board the software already knows what is the FPGA part used there so this step is very important because the final bit stream generated by Vivado can be use for programming the particular FPGA that you choose at this step okay so remember to choose the right one click next and finish now we want to will create a project file which has an extension dot xpr in the particular folder that you chose before now this is the window you are going to get once the project opens up and we want to it's a pretty complicated software it has a lot of options actually so before Vivado came, Xilinx, they used to have many software for FPGA development. So they used to have ISC software, then there was another software called Planahead, XPR. Now Vivado, it combines all those software and give you a single software. That's why it looks much more complicated. Now, we will learn it by doing projects instead of trying to remember everything. So the window on this left, this left panel is called a project manager. This is where you change your settings and run the simulation, run synthesis, etc. And this is the window where you can see all your source code in the source panel. Here you will see some properties later when we use them. And at the bottom we have log and messages and the tickle console. So Vivado it supports uh, tickle. Uh, language also which is a scripting language similar to Perl or Python again if, if time permits we'll see it later okay okay so let's go ahead and start our first project so the first step is to add or create a vidlog file to your project so you go ahead and click this plus button or right click and say add sources or under file you can choose a new file one of them okay so i prefer right click and choose add sources and you will get this option we are going to write a source file with log source file so choose the second option add or create design sources click next we don't have the file already so we have to create the file so click create file and give a name to your file let's call it led control dot v click OK and click finish now using this window you can specify what are the inputs and output to your hardware so that we will give you a template for writing your code okay so we don't need the template you can just click OK at this point of time and he will create the VLOG file for you and it will be listed under design sources so go ahead and double click and you can see Vivado, he has already put some, some header part here. He has filled the name of your module. He has put end module. And again, remember Vivado is the industry standard software. This is the one actually used in industries. And that's why you see the information like the company name, engineer name, etc., which you are supposed to fill if you are using the software in an industry. Here also, it is better if you, if you fill them. Okay, so I hope you remember uh, Vidlog from our previous semester. So in Vidlog, every piece of hardware is called a module. The module can be as small as a single gate or even a transistor or as big as a processor. So again, following the software development concept, 
in vidlog or hdl languages they also follow a hierarchical design methodology so we usually start from smaller module then combine them to make more and more complex modules okay now after module you have the name of the module which he gave as led control and within the bracket you need to give the interface to the module basically what are the inputs what are the output from our hardware so this particular hardware it has eight switches as input and eight leds as output so that's it so you just list them here so i'll say input seven down to zero to indicate there are eight of them and switch and output seven down to zero LED. okay so as simple as that now in this portion between the interface specification and n module you have to write the logic for your hardware so this is a very simple hardware what you basically have to do is connect the switch with the led so that when switch is high led is high and switch is low led is low so it is simply writing assign led equal to switch okay this is enough so so this logic will make the state of led same as the state of switch so when you turn on switch led will go you turn off switch led will turn off now traditionally once you write your software the next step is to run the simulation to make sure your logic works fine so remember from last semester the first simulation is called a behavioral simulation you are not considering any of the timing information here you are just checking whether your logic is correct or not so go to the simulation option under project manager and click run behavioral simulation uh, this is one of the advantages of vivado compared to quartus which you use for intel fpgas vivado comes with an integrated simulator so you don't have to install model sim separately and the simulator is as powerful as model sim and, and you can see the interface looks pretty similar you have the wave window here you have all the modules listed here and if you click any of the module this object window will list all the signals under that module when the simulator starts by default all the inputs will be at high impedance and you, since you wrote output is same as input outputs are also at high impedance so you can go ahead and start restart here to restart the simulator and uh, similar to model sim you can force constant give some value to your input let me give a 5 in hexadecimal click ok and run for 10 nanoseconds and you will see as soon as i give a5 to the input the output also become a5 now zoom in zoom out options they are again same as model sim i for zoom in or for zoom out or you can use these icons now let me give some other value for constant let's say one zero to input and click output also becomes one zero so here you can immediately see this is a pure combination circuit the output changes immediately with input okay it doesn't have to remember anything from the past which makes it pure combination so once you're satisfied with the simulation you can close the simulator you have to close here not here which will close vivado so just close here and quit the simulation and come back to our previous window Okay. now the next step is synthesis so during synthesis what happens is vivado he reads your code and finds out how to map your hdl description using LUTs, flip-flops and other basic building blocks of fpg okay like we discussed in our first lecture so go ahead and click run synthesis here and click ok now synthesis will run and you can see it will show here running synthesis and uh, under log you choose synthesis and you can see all the log messages if there is any error or warning it will be listed here as well as it will come under messages here also okay so keep an eye on warnings 
Now, depending upon the complexity of your circuit, synthesis may take a few minutes to several hours. So that depends how complex your hardware is, how powerful your computer is. Okay, so again, similar to our ASIC design, which we did last semester. Now, once synthesis is over, this window comes up. You can choose open synthesized design either from here or if you accidentally click cancel, you can go and click it from here, open synthesized design. So that synthesized design will be open. So you might have seen it, it, it showing uh, initializing netlist, see netlist view. So like we discussed last semester, the output of synthesis is a netlist which is a graph representation of your circuit. So the graph will basically show you um, the nodes. In, in, in case of FPGAs, the nodes will be either lots of flip-flops and the edges will be the wires connecting them. Now for our particular circuit, you can see this is our input, switch seven down to zero. There are seven of them. There are eight of them, sorry. LED seven down to zero. 8 LEDs. These are buffers. Again, we discussed last semester, we need input and output buffers for current driving and impedance matching purposes. So you don't have to explicitly mention it in your code. Vivado, he will automatically add input buffers to all your input signals and output buffers to all your output signals by default. Now you see what he actually did. So Every input buffer is simply connected to an output buffer, which is connected to an output pin. That's it. So basically, our logic, it is not consuming any of the FPG resources other than buffers and wires. It is not using any lookup table or any flip-flop. Okay. Now, if you, if you go and click this Sigma button, you can still see the project summary and if you come down you will be able to see what is the resource utilization how many lookup tables and how many flip-flops are consumed by your design it is not consuming anything that's why it is blank the only resource it is consuming is input output pin so your circuit needs 16 input output pins which is true you need eight input pins you need eight output pins which makes it 16. This particular FPGA has total 484 pins but out of 484 only 200 are available to you. Remaining pins are either used for VCC ground etc or connecting the capacities etc. So you can use only 200 pins out of the 484 pins. Fine. Now again traditionally the next step is to run the post synthesis simulation so if you go to simulation and click on simulation this option is highlighted post synthesis functional simulation again by ignoring timing information or post synthesis timing simulation which includes the timing information for propagation delays of flats flip flop etc but at this point of time the propagation delay for wires are not available because you are design is not placed and routed. Again, all concepts are similar to our ASIC design. Okay, but I'm not going to run post synthesis simulation because our circuit is so simple. I'm, I'm confident that it will be working. The important thing next is called pin assignment. So again, remember, like I mentioned, since we, since we have a pre-manufactured board the pins where these LEDs and switches are connected are predefined okay so you need to tell Vivado so you you already saw the netlist view so if you missed it you can go synthesis and that's an option schematic here you click it so Vivado knows you have eight inputs coming from pins there are eight output coming out of uh, the chip. Now he doesn't know to which physical pin these LEDs belong to or to which physical pins the switches are connected to. 
because that is not a universal truth okay so to which pin these things are connected depends upon the particular pcb that we have or particular hardware platform that you have oh, only by choosing z board it doesn't happen magically you should specify it explicitly which are the pins to which the switches are connected which are the pins to which these leds are connected okay now that information you can either download the z port hardware user guide okay how do you some manual and you just go ahead and search for leds user leds and you can see the particular pin number listed here or that is also directly printed on the z port also so if you look next to the leds and slide switches the same pin numbers are mentioned there also okay so you can use them also no problem okay so this information you have to specify okay to do that you need to first synthesis then click open synthesis now on top right corner here you have to choose io planning input output planning now you can see a new window and this window is basically showing you the bottom side of the fpga so these are all the pins here and you can see some of the pins they already have a ground symbol and some of them are already highlighted that means all these pins are reserved you cannot use them but other pins you will be able to use okay and here under io port he will list all the inputs and output coming from your design for example i have led 0 down to 7 and switches 0 down to 7 and now you have to specify where led 0 is connected so led 0 on the board is the rightmost led and that is connected to pin number t22 now again you can see here the pins are arranged in two dimensional matrix form so every pin has a number by by using the raw number and the corresponding column number so t22 is raw t and column 22 so this particular pin is actually connected to the first elite and you need to specify it under package pin so you click it and choose t22 now that pin will get highlighted here if everything was fine so oh sorry i chose led7 which is, will be problematic so if i try to give it to led0 it will give an error because it's already assigned to one of them so let me replace it and give led0 to t22 now next one is t21 t21 next u22 22 And finally, U14. Okay, same way you need to specify the position for switches also. Now, if you if you mix up the pin number, you may find when you are sliding switch number five, LED four is turning on. Okay, if that is the intention, that is perfectly fine. You can do that also by manipulating this this pin allocation. Okay. 
Now switches are also listed here. Switch zero. These are the eight slide switches or dip switches. F22. F22. G22. 22 H22 H21 H18 H17 Okay, so we have assigned all the pins. Now, one more important thing is specifying the input output standard. Now, again, FPGAs they are so flexible, they support multiple voltage standard for their input output pin. Okay, so if you are using LEDs and switches, a good option is to use. LVC MOS 18, low voltage CMOS 18, or you can use LVC MOS 3.3 also. So this means uh, the LED output will be 1.2 volt maximum. If you use 3.3, the output voltage going to the LED will be 3.3 volt maximum. So it doesn't matter which standard you choose here, all of them will work. Maybe we can choose LVC MOS. Okay, let me see most it. That's enough. For switches also, you have to choose the standard. Again, let me choose LVC most 18. Now, if you don't choose it, later when you run Vivado, when you reach the last step, when you do the bitstream generation, it will give an error uh, saying you haven't specified the IO standard. So you should specify the IO standard, although by default it shows a uh, default standard of 1.8 yes so you should specify again now once this much is done you can go ahead and save this information and you will get a message here so this message is basically saying the pin information that you just entered will be saved as a constraint file okay so this is one of the constraints and we call it as a kind of location constraint or pin constraint now this information will be saved in a separate file called an xdc file filing design constraint which is similar to the sdc file which we used last time but signings they are calling it xdc file signings design constraint now if you click ok you will get this window and vivara is basically asking you to enter a name to the XTC file so you can you can see oh he already chose the file type as XTC and you just have to give some name to it you can call it by whatever name you want again let me call it LED control there is no rule like the name of the module and name of constraint file should match but traditionally we keep the top file name top module name and the XTC file name as the same okay you just save it now if you come to the source tab now you can see there is a folder constraints now and under constraint you can see LED control.xtc and it has the same information that you just entered through the GUI but in a text format okay now uh, later when you do project now you don't have to go to the GUI and do it you can just copy paste this information from here and you can just edit it here so so this is very trivial information you can see the name of the port here the name of the pin here and uh, to which FPGA pin this should be mapped to that's all and also it has the information the name of the pin and the IO standard that's it that's all the information stored in the XTC file at this point of time later you will uh, add other constraints also same way we did for our IC design uh, this location constraint may not be present for IC design but we have other constraints there uh, but here whenever you do an FPG design whenever you have input output pins coming in and going out of the chip 
you should specify the location using a constraint file. If you're using uh, signings FPGA, you should define them using this XTC file. Okay, so that's it. Once you have done pin assignment, you can go ahead and do implementation. You can click on run implementation. And he will basically say your synthesis is out of date. It is happening because you added a new constraint file to your project. Okay, so he will say you need to run synthesis again. Now, again, there are a certain rule whether you really want to rerun the synthesis or not. If you are adding or if you are changing any of the constraint, there is no need to rerun the synthesis. But if you are changing anything in your Vedlog source code, you should rerun the synthesis. Okay, since we have a very small design, it's fine even if you rerun synthesis. But if you have a very huge design, I don't want to rerun my entire synthesis because I changed something in my XTC file. If that is the case, it means if you are confident you haven't changed anything in Vedlog code, you have changed only the constraint file, you can go ahead and right click under design run synth option, right click and say force up to date. So he will say design is up to date. You can just go ahead and run implementation. Otherwise he will run synthesis again, then he will run the implementation. Okay. Now implementation again basically consists of two steps, exactly same as our ASIC design flow. It has a placement step. It also has a routing step. So like we mentioned in our first video about FPGA design, Placement basically determines which LUTs, which physical LUTs should be used for implementing your particular logic. In our in our current example, um, there are no LUTs, so he actually doesn't have to do it. In the routing, he has to connect, interconnect these LUTs, as well as he has to connect the corresponding LUTs with the input-output pin. Okay, so again, in our particular example, he doesn't have to do it. In our example, he only has to connect the input buffers with the output buffers. Okay, so he has to configure the internal switch boxes, some of the switch boxes, so that the particular input pins are connected with the particular output pins. So this is a very simple design. That's why that's why it happens so fast. Now, depending upon the complexity of your circuit, again, this may take several minutes to several hours or maybe a day or two. Once you have done implementation, again, traditionally, the step is to run a post-implementation functional simulation and a post-implementation timing simulation. I'm not going to do it now because our design is quite simple. Maybe for our next design, we will do it. Okay. Then choose generate bit stream, which is the last step. And during this step, Vivado will generate the final bit file, which is used for programming your FPGA. So let me prepare my board. So when you used SDK, you had to connect two micro USB. Z-board. One was for sending you a, a software ELF file and one was to the UART interface for communication. Now in this particular example, you are not using the processor, you are using only the FPGA portion. Okay, uh, so, so there is no UART communication happening, so you don't need the second UART interface connected to your computer. You just have to connect the programming interface to your computer. Now same programming interface is used for uh, sending the ELF file as well as sending the bit file. Okay, so he has the corresponding logic inside the chip which finds out whether this is a software targeting for the processor or whether this is a bit stream targeting the SPGA portion and he will do it accordingly. Now once bit stream generation is completed you can open hardware manager either from here or if you miss from here you can go here and click open target under open hardware manager and click auto connect and uh, 
now he will search for your board so your board should be powered up and uh, the programming interface should be connected to the computer okay if if that is properly done if all drivers are installed this is the window you are going to see you will see two things here one is arm underscore dap this is the ps part processor part DAP uh, stands for debug access port this is for the processor below that you will see xz020 this is the pl part the fpga part and it's written not not program okay so you can right click and choose program device or you can choose program device from here and he will automatically find out the bitstream since they are all in the same folder and you can choose program once you program your board note that one blue led comes up this is called the done signal and whenever you program the fpga this led should turn on okay it should glow this shows like the fpga part of the chip is successfully programmed you can also see i have the programming cable here i have the power cord here now our, our requirement was whenever i turn on a particular dip switch or slide switch the corresponding led should turn on and you can see it is happening here so whichever switch is on the corresponding led is turning on now remember like i mentioned in the first lecture fpgas they are volatile in nature that means once you remove the power and you give the power back that blue led is not there that means the program inside the fpga is lost so you have to reprogram it okay so this concludes our first tutorial of viewer